Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to this talk. Um, I know it's late and uh, energy tends to decline. Uh, so um, don't worry. Uh, during this talk, I will be doing all the hard work. Uh, and if your brain is like, really switched off, you can just look at the pictures, and that's fine, too. Um, the topic of today's talk is this um, woodcutting by Asher. It's called the square limit. Uh, of course, this is uh, a crappy PNG rendering of, of the woodcutting. Um, so, so obviously, uh, then the, the, the topic is uh, recursion. Um, and uh, oh, let's see, so that's, that's one part of the story. The other part of the story is this paper by Peter Henderson uh, called Functional Geometry. Uh, so basically, this talk is based on this paper. Uh, the original version of the paper is from 1982, so it's quite old. And then this is a revised version from 2002, which is still kind of oldish. Um, what Henderson does is that he creates what he calls a picture algebra to reconstruct this uh, artwork by Escher. So he starts by uh, defining some simple transformations on pictures and ways to combine pictures. And then he sort of reconstructs this image, which is kind of faithful to, to the structure of uh, Escher's artwork. So what I'm going to try to do in this talk is basically to do this, um, to create this, uh, to sort of follow in Henderson's footsteps, if you like. Uh, yes. So here we have an F. Uh, that's what we're going to start with. Um, the F is rendered by an L program. Um, and the basic uh, abstraction that we have to work with that uh, Henderson defines in a paper is a picture. Now, what's a little bit unusual is in that Hender in Henderson's paper, a picture is not like a collection of pixels or anything like that. It's a function from a bounding box to a rendering. Now, what is a rendering? A rendering is a, a list of shapes and styles. Again, a, a shape could be some collection of uh, lines or polygons or curves, stuff like that. I'm not going to look at that too deeply. Uh, style is just, OK, color and width of stroke and st stuff like that. Uh, what about this box? Uh, this box is uh, made up of uh, three vectors, an A vector, a B vector, and a C vector. And I think it, it would help a lot if I just showed you. So this F that we were looking at was not really a picture. It was a rendering of a picture inside a box, uh, specifically this box. Right? So this is my A vector, my B vector, and my C vector. And then implicitly, we have sort of the top corner made up by following this or that or like that. Now, what's interesting with this picture is the, uh, that it sort of adapts to the box that I give it. So I could like make the box uh, thinner. Or I can do stuff like this, and it's sort of the F has to, has to adapt to whatever box I give it. And I can be sort of, I suppose, cruel to it if I like. I can just squish it down like that. But it doesn't really matter. It's going to bounce right back if I give it a nice square box again. OK, so what can I do with this? Well, it gives me uh, some ideas for, for creating transformations. So say, um, what happens if I, I define a function to turn the box around? Now, what's going on in here is, OK, this is a bit of L. I'm deconstructing my box here. This is my A vector, my B vector, and my C vector. And then I'm going to reconstruct another box. That box. Well, yeah, I should have shown you, I suppose. So what I can do with these vectors, I can add them, uh, I can negate them, making them go the other way around. Um, I can subtract them, and I can scale them. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, my new A vector is going to be the sum of the previous A and B, and my new B vector is going to be the old C vector, and the new C vector is going to be the negation of the old B vector. And again, it's much better just to show you, I think. So, OK. Um, again, this is a bit of L, right? So 
we're going to do a lot of function calls, and we're used to seeing function calls like, okay, maybe my function is fn, and then I pass it the argument a. Another way of doing that using this pipe forward thing is like so. Right, so it just gives me a way to sort of turn it around. And if I have something, if I have a function that takes two parameters, I can I can pass sort of the last one along using this pipe. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm starting with the box, then I'm turning the box, then I'm passing that to my function uh, to my picture function, and then I'm sort of drawing the rendering in the browser. Okay, I turn the box. What should happen then? I'm going to turn the box here as well so we can see it. So I turn the box. And that's sort of the same as uh, turning the picture itself. So that gives me an idea of how I might want to go about uh, creating a turn function for my picture. So to turn a, uh, a picture, uh, well, um, it's going to have to return a picture, which is going to be a function from a box to a rendering. So I'm going to start with a box. Then I'm going to turn that box. Then I'm going to just pass it to the old picture, right? So I'm just going to delegate to the original picture. That's going to be my turn picture. So I'm going to pass my box now to the turned picture. So this is the box that I'm going to uh, pass to it. And now I have sort of passed this box to a turned picture. And there's really no way of knowing if this was sort of an original primitive picture or one that has been turned from some other picture. OK, so that was turn. Uh, yeah. Now, there is something called function composition. Position, yeah which is this operator here. It says that if you have a function from A to B and you have a function from B to C, so that sort of the types match up, then you can compose those into a new uh, function from A to Z. And we have that because we have a turn box function, which is a function from a box to a box. And we have a picture, which is a function from a box to a rendering. Rendering. So I can compose those, like so. That's going to give me what? It's going to give me a, a function from a box to a rendering. And a function from a box to a rendering is a picture. So instead of writing this, I can just write this. So I compose my turn box function with the picture itself, which is kind of weird, but I can do that because my picture is a function. Yes. A kind of cool thing is that, OK, turn uh, is a function from a picture to a picture. I can compose that with itself to turn it twice. And just to show what's going on, I can do the same thing with the turn box function because that's from a box to a box, like so. We can keep going like that. In fact, I'm going to do that quite a bit in this talk. So I'm going to create uh, a helper function called times. And what times is going to do is take some a number and a function and compose it with itself a number of times. Now, if it, that number happens to be less than one, then I'm just going to return the identity function. The identity function is, well, it's supposed to say here that it, it returns exactly what you give it. But if it's not, then I'm going to compose with calling myself recursively until I reach this identity thing. So you can see how that works. So you can say times three turn. And I can say times three turn box. And now I turn it three times. And I can keep going. It's, uh, it gets less interesting when I'm come to four times because then I'm all the way around, which is kind of the similar 
to doing it zero times, which is okay. I didn't turn it. Uh, yes. Okay, so that was the first transformation. Uh, let's sort of uh, get on with uh, some more picture transformations. The next one I want to do is, let's see. Yes, I have. I want to have a transformation that turns a picture like this, so it sort of flips it. And I'm going to use the same trick again. I'm just going to say that, OK, to flip a picture, I'm going to flip the box, compose it with the original picture. Of course, I'd, I don't have this flip box function, so I'm going to have to write that. That's even easier than writing this turn box thing. I'm going to go to the same place, add the A, B vector, and I'm just going to turn the old B vector around, and then I'm done. Let's see. Let's see if I'm really done. And again, I'm just going to show the effect of flipping the box. Right. I can only do that once. It gets uninteresting when I do it twice. So the final uh, simple transformation that I'm going to do is something uh, that I like to call toss, because it resembles sort of throwing the picture up into the air. Um, so let's see. Toss. I'm going to do the same trick. Toss box. I didn't save it. Let's see, box. And this is a little bit, a bit more work here. So what's going on? I'm going to add. I'm going to start at the original A, and then I'm going to add half of the B vector to half of the C vector. That's going to be my new A. This thing here is going to be in my new B, and this subtracting half of the c vector or uh, half of the b vector from half of the c vector is going to be my new z vector and you might not have a precise image in your head of what this is going to do so i'm just going to show you uh, i cannot type go toss now to see it uh, i'm going to render both the box the original box and the toss box at the same time so you can see what's sort of going on. So I, I threw it up here, and then it's, it's also shrinking by a factor of the square root of 2. So if I do it multiple times, like so, you can see that it keeps shrinking, and it keeps rotating. And I think that's so much fun to do that I, I created something called, oh, that's the wrong one. I didn't want that. I want this one. I have a function, helper function called gather boxes. So I'm going to have a number n. Uh, so I'm going to toss it n times. And I'm going to, instead of doing this, I'm just going to use this gather boxes that's going to do that work for me. So whatever intermediate boxes I get by tossing it a number of times, uh, I'm going to have that rendered. So if I do it like six times, it's going to rotate nicely like so. OK, that was the last sort of primitive transformation of pictures. Now let's try to sort of build larger pictures out of smaller pictures. So I'm going to create uh, a function called above. It takes two pictures. I'm going to have a flipped F and, and an F and see what that's going to look like. Because I don't have that. Uh, let's see. So above. So it's going to take two pictures and produce a picture. Um, I'm going to do it in a sort of generalized way, which assigns, oh, that was the wrong one, um, a weight to each of the pictures. So this M is going to be the weight assigned to the first picture. The N is going to be the weight assigned to the second picture. So I'm, I can sort of control the proportion given to each picture. So that's going to be a function from a box to some rendering. So I have two weights. I'm just going to calculate the proportion given to the first picture. 
And because of types, I'm going to have to convert my integers to floats. And what I want to do is I want to split the original box that I was given into two boxes, and I'm going to draw each picture into uh, its own box. Like so. And what's going on here? Well, what I want to do is when I'm given a box in this picture here, I want to render uh, my first picture in the top box and my second picture in the second box. And since these are just lists, I can con concatenate those lists for my final rendering. Uh, of course, I don't have split vertically. Let's see? Split vertically? OK, so I want, uh, what should I do with these boxes? Well, the bottom box is kind of easy. I just have to scale that down a little bit. How much? Well, f if the f is the fraction that I'm going to give to the top picture, so it's going to be 1 minus that fraction. Whereas the top box, I'm going to have to move that on top of the bottom box and then scale it. And it's not going to say mover. So 1 minus f is the proportion given to the bottom box. f is the proportion given to the top box. So move. Now moving it is quite easy. I just start at the a, and then I follow along my c vector for that fraction that I gave it. So some number between 0 and 1. Scaling is also quite easy. It's actually easier. So I'm just going to shrink my C vector with whatever number I give it. Again, between 0 and 1. So with that, I have my above ratio. And I can implement above in terms of above ratio, just giving it equal weights to each picture. That's going to sort of ensure that it get, they get half each. And then because, uh, because due to partial application, I don't really have to do this. I can do this instead. So this is partial application. So my above function is what I get when I sort of pass in these two numbers here and then sort of leave this for getting them later. OK. Let's see if it works. So above is already here. And it did work. Oh, yeah. Huh. Like so. Now I put it on top of uh, one another. And what's going on under the hood, just to show you, is really this, right? So I'm splitting the box. There's no magic. It's just manipulation of boxes. So inside that picture, I'm creating these boxes, and then I'm rendering them inside. Now, you might wonder, OK, why did you bother doing this generalized thing? Well. If there are more than two pictures, uh, that can be useful. So I'm going to create a function called column that takes a list of pictures and then sort of evenly spaces them out. So I have my list. Then I'm going to do a pattern match on that list. And if it's empty, there are no pictures, then I'm just going to return a blank picture. And I don't think I showed you, but uh, a blank picture is the picture that takes a box and does nothing gives you an empty rendering. Uh, yes. If I do have one picture, well, it's just going to be that one thing. So the final and sort of only interesting case if it is if I have more than one. And I'm going to do above ratio. And for the first, this is going to be the, my first image. I'm just going to have a weight of one. But for the rest, I'm going to have, well, basically, how, however many pictures I have left is going to be the weight assigned to, to the rest. So I have my head here, and then I'm going to call column recursively for the tail. Let's see if that works. Like 
That's what we'll call them now. Something like this. And we have sort of evenly spaced out these pictures. Yeah, and I, I dropped the box, but I can, I can have it here. So we sort of see the box that we pass in. Uh, similarly to above, uh, there is, uh, I can compose pictures by putting them next to each other. Uh, I'm going to cheat a bit for that because it's going to be very, very similar to what we just did. So cheat for beside. So you can see it's the same thing with the ra ratio and, and the beside. I'm going to do the same thing here. Cheat with the implementation of doing this splits the other way. Um, OK, that's, let's see, um, the E side. I'm going to introduce, we've lo been looking at so many Fs. So I want, I want a new figure. I have a stick man called George. Uh, let's see. I can flip George, and combine him with himself. What's going to happen then is that he's going to high five himself. Um, and it's, it's kind of cool. Uh, what I like about this paper and these combinators is that, uh, is that they compose very nicely, right? So if I I create something like uh, a twin function that takes a picture and does exactly what we just saw. So flip the picture and then the picture. I can do, well, what I had was that I have a twin of George. But I can do that multiple times, right? I can keep going as long as I like and have, have sort of more copies of the same thing. Um, which is kind of cool. Um, so now we have, I can put things on top of each other, next to each other. Uh, what I'd like to uh, do now is create a, a two by two grid called a quartet. And I'm going to do that with George as well. Like so. And what's nice now is that, okay, there was a bit of work with these boxes and splitting and all that stuff. Um, now that I have these, Implementing quartet is kind of trivial. What is a quartet? I have four pictures, sort of the northwest and northeast and southwest and southeast. And implementing that is, well, it's a one-liner, right? I sort of squish these together, these together, and put them on, on top of each other, uh, and I have a quartet. Let's see. Yeah, like so. Of course, this is uh, a bit ugly. Um, so let's let's do some transformations on George. Uh, let's say flip, turn him twice. Uh, turn him twice, and then just flip. And he sort of holds hands with himself or something like that. And again. Um, Composes very nicely, so uh, say I have. I'm just going to create a sort of an anonymous function here to create another quartet, like so. And you know, I can and create this basically arbitrarily large, right? Like so. And it's just a picture, even though I've composed it many times. It's uh, I'm still quite able to just toss it up into the air if I like, right? So it's, it remains a picture, however complicated it might have been to get to that point uh, where I have this picture, but it's just a picture. Okay, so that was quartet. Now, um, next thing that I wanted to create is a no-net. A no-net is like a quartet, uh, but it's a three-by-three three grid. And that's also quite easy to create. Um, I already have this column thing. I'm just going to cheat and have a row thing as well. A row is exactly the same, just for, for putting things next to each other. And with that, I can create a row. 
And then I'm going to create a column out of three rows. Let's see if I got this right. And I have a few more letters that we can play with. So let's see. So that I can, oh well, this line got kind of long, didn't it? So I can have nine letters like this arranged in a three by three grid. Of course, it's a little bit boring just to see it like that. So we can make it a little bit more interesting by sort of taking out the middle one. And I'm just going to start by putting in a blank there. So you can see I sort of removed the middle picture, right? I can put the E back in, and then we're sort of where we started. But again, you can see I, I sort of obsess with this thing where you compose things with itself, so you can have this sort of recursive uh, structure, right? OK, uh, so we have like 15 minutes left, uh, so I, I think it's time to get to the fish, right? Uh, let's let's see the fish. So I have a fish, which is made out of fish shapes. Right, we can take a very quick look. Um, the fish shape, well, it has a bunch of curves basically. Uh, let's take a look at the fish. So the fish looks like this. So you can sort of recognize it from the paper, right? Uh, the fish is kind of interesting because it, it doesn't really respect the box because it's parts of it are sort of reach outside the box, but it still renders itself uh, with respect to the box. Um, and I'm going to create perhaps a, a sort of strange combinator called over, which is like a degenerate above. So I'm going to take two pictures. And we're going to create a picture by just drawing both of the pictures inside the same box. That's a recipe for chaos, right? Uh, it could get, well, let's see what happens if I do fish and F. Well, it's ugly, right? It's just on top of each other. Um, yeah. So you'd need an interesting shape for that to, well, let's see. Yeah, I, I can't do fish twice, can I? I can do turn twice. Right. This fish fits nicely with, with itself like that. Right. Uh, and with that, I can start to make the tiles that I need to create the square limit. The first tile is called the T tile in, in Henderson paper. I, I never figured out why, but that's what it's called, so that's what I'm going to call it as well, t-tile. And the t-tile, well, I'm just going to assume that I have a fish now. I mean, I can pass any picture in there, but it's going to be ugly unless it's that fish. So, so let's just call it a fish. And from that fish, I'm going to derive what I call the northern fish by tossing and flipping the original fish then I'm going to draw that on top of the original fish. And I'm not quite done, but I just want to do it stepwise so you can see what's going on. Uh, yes, that's the t-tile. So that's sort of the northern fish, right? And I can drop this box now. It doesn't really do us any good. Uh, I need also, there is room for one more fish. So I'm going to take the northern fish, and turn it three times over. And then I'm going to draw that on top of whatever else I got. So I have this is now the t-tile, right? So that's one of the basic building blocks that I got. Um, I think we have time, so I'm going to just play a little bit with it. Uh, so let's see, cycle p. Uh, cycle is going to be a quartet. Um, let's see if this is correct. I think so. I'm going to create one of these two by two grids um, by just doing various kinds of rotations from zero to three. Uh, 
let's try to see if that looks nice or not. Looks kind of nice, right? And again, right, I can do this multiple times, and it's well, it's an interesting shape. Uh, so that's one of the tiles I need. Uh, the other tile is called the U tile, and again, I don't know why. But there we go. Um, the U tile. Uh, the U tile is quite similar, it's almost identical actually to to the T tile. So I'm just going to steal my implementation here. So I'm going to start with the same northern fish, but I'm going to have some more. So I'm going to have a western and a southern and the eastern. And the eastern is actually the same as we had before. So let's see, fish east over fish s over fish west over fish n. But I'm, I'm going to drop the last one. So this is the Utah, right? Uh, so I basically replaced uh, this fish that I had here uh, with these two fishes instead. And again, I can mess about with that a little bit if I like. It's that trick with the uh, anonymous function to create a quartet again, and it sort of still fits nicely with itself, and you can go on composing into a nice shape. Um, so yeah, uh, with that, we're ready to do the recursion. Uh, so the, the final uh, square limit is going to be one of these no nets. So it's going to be composed by a middle piece, and then it's going to be uh, four rotations of a side piece and four rotations of a corner piece. So now what I want to start with is to create this side. And that's going to be now a recursive function. Let's see. So if n is less than 1, then it's just going to be a blank picture. It's going to be nothing. Um, but it's, if it's not, then I'm going to call side recursively. Uh, like so, fish. And I'm going to have a t tile of the fish. And then I'm going to create a quartet with two copies of the recursive call to side, and then a turned t-tile and the t-tile. Let's see what that looks like. Um, yeah. I'm just going to uh, tweak a little bit on the rendering here. I'm going to... I want to have these boxes to show you, but I don't want these all these arrows everywhere. Uh, so let's, let's see. So I want side. of these. I'm trying to write an N. And then I have, like similarly uh, with uh, uh, the gathering of the boxes for the toss box, I also have a way of sort of gathering up boxes for these recursive calls, because it helps to see what's going on. Um, now, this is the base case, and it's, it's really boring, right? It's the blank case, but this is my box, so I, I rendered nothing inside my box. Uh, it gets more interesting um, when you have... Uh, this is the, sort of the first step, and now you have... This, these are the blanks from before, right? The recursive call to side zero, and then it's the t-tile and the turn t-tile. Now, what's going to uh, happen as I, I sort of uh, increase the levels of, levels of recursion. I'm going to have copies of this entire thing in here and in here. Like so. And I can sort of keep going as long as I like. And sort of uh, approaching them uh, to this limit up here. So that's the side. Um, and then the corner is kind of similar. We have five minutes. Let's see. Corner. Corner is sort of similar, but it has two recursive cases. It has recursive case for the corner itself, and then it also uses the side. And then finally, I create a quartet out of that. The corner, the side, a turned side, 
and the U tile with the four fishes. Let's see. Now, did I update this here? Yes, I did. And yeah, we can start at N1, I suppose. You can see. So this is the U tile, and then I'm going to have sides here and the corners growing up like that. I'm going to do it a little bit faster. Just going to sort of skip the intermediator steps. And now we're, we're basically done. Uh, now we can do square limit. In fact, let's, let's try to make it a little bit bigger. Something like this. So square limit. Uh, square limit is kind of boring to write, so I'm just going to cheat for that. It's not because it's difficult, because it's not. Uh, it's just the U tile, which is going to be my centerpiece. Four ro rotations of the corner, four rotations of the side, and then a no net, and that's it. Let's see. Yeah, I don't want that. And there we have it. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have four more minutes, and uh, well, there's one thing, right? Oh, I didn't want this. Where is my? I wanted to look at this, right? There is one thing that is kind of obvious, right? This thing has colors. Um, so I have. Let's see. Where is it? Here we have it. So I have another variation running. Right. And I didn't mean to save it. I just want to look at it. So this is uh, another version of the fish. This is a black fish. And I can take the black fish. Uh, what's kind of sort of interesting with this fish is that I can change the color with a function. So I have this recoloring function called rehue. Uh, that I can rehue as many times as I like. Now I have a white fish. If I do it three times, I'm back with the black fish. Uh, and with this, I can create another version of the square limit. Let's see. Ah, that was not what I wanted. So let's see, square limit, like so. With nice colors, right? Actually, this is not quite. This is not quite uh, square limit. If I want to square limit, I need to start with the gray, right? So, like so, this is the proper uh, square limit. And what's kind of fun is that you can you can play with colors if you like. So you can maybe swap out the gray fish with red fish, or you can use. Uh, an entirely different sort of color scheme altogether to sort of have like just variations of blue. I mean, every artist needs to have this sort of blue period, right? So, so now Asher has as well. So, thank you. Uh, one more thing. Uh, if you're interested, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, sort of get carried away. Uh, I do have if I have conference Wi-Fi, I do have uh, an Escher and Elm workshop online. So if you're interested, you can sort of walk through it on your own. It's supposed to be self-contained. So if it's not, then that's my fault. And you can sort of uh, explain how I failed in explaining how you should do it. Uh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs>